And so let's send our hopes to those who are injured and let's send our humble grievance to all of those who died during the terrorist attack all over the world. Faces of war for quite a long time. And as we all know, Ukraine has been captivated in the mass media since the Revolution of Dignity. However, recently we've seen that Ukraine just came out of the news, unfortunately, and it's not on anymore the headlines. And it's it's really painful for all of us because we still know that the war is still there. We still have funerals every single day. Even today, we've received really bad news that five of our soldiers have died, and there are many more injured. So we know that the war, which followed after the revolution of dignity, just exposed the fragility of peace. Even at the time when all of us would think that Europe and war and 21st centuries is the thing which doesn't have anything in common. But as we've seen, we are all in danger and none of us are really protected right now. So we do truly really hope that the current exhibition will reveal the relevance of the problem that we all aware of. The war in Ukraine, the war which does touch every single family in Ukraine, the war which does touch every European because, as I mentioned already, that war in the 21st century in the middle of Europe is definitely not the right thing to happen. We are really kindly asking you to spread the word about the problem in Ukraine and just not to keep silent and quiet about what is happening in our state. So, and right now I would like to invite um, Pan Glodko Pavlyuk, the chairman of the Association of Ukrainians in the Great Britain, who is the head of the London Bridge here. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Association of Ukrainians in the Great Britain, London Branch, we welcome you all to our home. And I think as previous speaker did say, yeah, the conflict in Ukraine is now ongoing. I, I like to usually use the term as Maidan was not the start and Maidan will not be the finish. So unfortunately this conflict with our neighbours in Russia has been going on for, I would say, hundreds of years. Other Europeans would say maybe a number of years. But it's a conflict that will probably be ongoing. And unfortunately with conflict there is victims. And victims there are many. Many families who would have been left without fathers, brothers, grandfathers. And it's those we should be thinking about. And I'm sure our thoughts are not only with those who have suffered yesterday in Paris here, but our thoughts are also with those hundreds, maybe thousands, who are suffering now in Ukraine. Because from what can we can see, this war is now ongoing. And it will probably become a frozen conflict that will last many, many years. Until our European partners, maybe other countries throughout the world, recognise that Russia or those who are neighbours, that is not a neighbour who, who we do not want. And therefore, those who amongst you who have, who have contacts, who know people who work and live in circles that could help Ukraine, I think now is the time because it's become not a quiet period, but a period of where anything can happen. Your voice is more important to us than ever before. Use your voice, use your contacts, to make sure that people understand this conflict is ongoing and that Ukraine needs as much help as possible. But as Ukrainians, we also understand that we need to help ourselves. We need to be strong and be united and understand that the most important part of Ukraine is having the Ukrainian state. So therefore, thank you for coming. Thank you for your support. Slava Ukraini. to invite Mr. Ihr Kazin, the Chair of the Affairs of Ukraine to the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. Thank you very much. Uh, dear guests, thank you very much first of all to invite me to participate in this uh, open exhibition. Actually, as you know, we had an uh, evening in our embassy and uh, we had a preview on this exhibition and uh, uh, I 
just uh, want to say that when, when you look at these pictures, you see literally a face, face of war. And in the name of the exhibition, we are very correct on the situation we have now in Ukraine. As I was mentioned, that we have a ceasefire for a moment, but with a fragile for ceasefire. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the light is some last day, we witnessed the aggravation of situation. And uh, this aggravation situation uh, provoked new reaction of international society and international community. Anyway, our embassy is here in London trying to draw attention to this new situation. And of course we go on with our demarche uh, in the, this parliament and in the parliament and the government of the United Kingdom. Unfortunately, as I mentioned as well, that Ukraine now is not on the radar of the news here in, in the British uh, media. But still, I, I think that our common goal, not to forget, and don't give them to forget that the, main, the most important problem and the most important conflict is in Europe, for a moment, is in Ukraine, unfortunately. Let me say as well, that looking at these people and the faces, you can see it, it's, it's my impression, personal impression, that really these people can win any war and we will do it. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much to you can aid to organize such exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you. As it has been said already that probably we don't have any moral right to stay aside from the events which are going on in Ukraine because we are everyone who are are the dearest, nearest there, and we don't even have a moral right to, to just to be aside. And um, Ukraine Aid and London Euromaidan, and there are different organizations, we are still trying to do their best. And there are still people here who are trying to fight and not to give up. Although there are so many obstacles on our way, but we are still doing our best somehow to help and some have to raise awareness of the people. And now I would like to invite Tatiana Vomnyanko, the managing director of Ukraine Aid, the person who does dedicate herself to the thing which she is doing to the Ukraine Aid organization. And obviously, all of us don't really regret of doing that many things. And so Tanya is one of those who are leading the ex exhibition, the one who is actually was and head of organizing it and the one who is ahead of supporting this exhibition. So please welcome to Tana Vignanko. I would like to say just a few words on behalf of uh, Ukraine Aid. We are a charitable organization and our main aim to support people affected by the war in Ukraine, which is not of their making. So uh, we are delighted to, um, uh, to show today our project, which is called Faces of the War, Human Factor. And it's a charitable project and all uh, donations will go towards uh, providing psychological rehabilitation to wounded and injured and we are planning uh, to cover the cost of psychological rehabilitation of 15 20 uh, injured, in, injured uh, probably after new year we will work on it on this project. And just a few words about the previous uh, project, probably some of you have been here, it was a fragile dependence. Exhibi photo photography exhibition and we collect collected 3,563 pounds and it's very valuable input and we are very grateful to all our supporters and donors. Uh, substantial amount of this uh, collected amount was uh, sent to one of the medical uh, institution in Ukraine, Nodus, to, for, to cover the cost of treatment uh, Artur Kuganze. And also we just uh, recently uh, uh, purchased uh, cosmetic uh, prosthetics for one of the injured Alech Voloshin. And uh, we continue our work and we hope we will see you here in Ukrainian Center more often. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Kind of a culture of art exhibition. So now I would like to invite Andrei Andrei Bukac, the prominent Ukrainian pop song, the Luciana Nebo, the Dunko Hadayo, and unless not whole following on the piano.
amazing. Yeah. Let's applaud them again. It's, yeah. it's marvelous. Yeah. Gabriela Brasim and Gabriela Rubin, who are going to perform two uh, songs for us on violin. So please invite Isabella and Gabriela. <laughs> I must, I must, but why? 
not to lose my soul. It is not this sorrow. This is why I am fated. I am fated to live in the world, to drag those chains in captivity. Maybe someday I will still look at Ukraine. So, and now I would like to invite Diana Matt. It's a young, talented photographer, singer. Diana is one of those Ukrainians who was deeply moved and inspired by Ukrainian struggle for its independence. After traveling to Ukraine's capital and visiting soldiers in Kiev hospital, um, she became a loud voice of their agony and their hope. So please welcome Diana and she will tell a couple of words about her story, about her new song she will present it for us. So please welcome Diana. I really appreciate that all of you are here tonight. And, um, this evening is very special for me because it's my debut exhibition. And on behalf of Ben, um, I'm sending his warm greetings to you and, and all of us, me, Ukrainian aid, Ben, we all appreciate that you, you came. Uh, you can read everything about the photos on the stands. I just want to say that the wars keep going on and we need to do our best to, to somehow help my motherland and our Ukraine to, to stay strong. Um, all of us, we try to help Ukraine in different ways. And, uh, one of the direction I've chosen is music. And today I'd like to present a music video we've done with the Ukrainian community in London. And I hope you will enjoy it. because there are people who really need, really need our help and if you look at their photos, if you look at these faces, you'll truly see that this war, it's not only on the photos, it's not only on the videos, it does touch every single person there and there are millions of stories behind these photos. So once again, thank you very much for coming today, please follow us on Facebook, on Instagram and Definitely, there will be events from Ukraine to London, Europe, Maidan. So, thank you very much for being with us.
My name is Diana Mas. I'm a photographer and a musician, and obviously my works are presented here tonight. I'm trying to do my best to help London Yevromaidan and Ukraine Aid. So I'm doing currently three projects, charity projects, which are devoted to, to help um, Ukrainian citizens uh, who struggle from the war. And that's one of them. Currently, me and Ukrainian Events, which is quite a big organization in London uh, of uh, Ukrainians. Uh, so we're doing Ukrainian calendar, which is called Ukrainian London, for the 2016 year. And we have combined few organizations, 12 of them obviously, for each month. And they somehow linked to the idea of the month and to the probably national um, festivals or something. And I think. I've done, I've done all the pictures for the calendar and I, I believe that the work is done my best to help Ukrainians. Coming to this exhibition, can you tell us what is your favorite image of all? Very difficult to rate yourself, but obviously because we are staying next to this picture. I believe the picture of this person is one of the most influential because I would say that situation in the Ukraine and um, the whole conflict, ev everything actually what, what's going on now can be seen in his eyes. And that's why emotionally I feel that this picture should open the exhibition. Tell us your secret. You're such a beautiful young lady and yet so strong to capture such distressful images. How do you do that? I just, I just try to, to be myself and to show people my feelings, which is what I'm doing within my songs. And the same this is what I'm doing with my pictures. I'm just trying to show this is what I've seen, this is what I felt. And and you can, you can join me in my feelings. And of course today you presented a song which touched lots of people. You could see in, in their eyes that they are amazed at what, what talent you've got. Um, whose song is that? So this is the song of Andre Loboda, that's the musician who died in the January of 2015 because of cancer. But I feel that because I was a big fan of his, his music. I decided to promote his songs. Um, I had a lot of friends in London who, who decided to help me. And that's the result we've got. And I believe that that's the protest song which, which should be heard. And we believe that the world will support Ukraine because of listening to this song. And of course, uh, Ukraine was supported today by yet another talented artist, Ben Robinson. Do you have any favorites from his images? Because they're very different from what you've got displayed here. I would say that I'm, I'm really impressed with Ben, his personality and obviously his works. I've met him at the panel discussion probably a few months ago. And uh, I was really impressed that he's a... Um, um, he's a lecturer in Oxford University. Um, I think he, um, he teaches philosophy, if, if, as far as I know. And, you know, being an English, Englishman, he, he is so passionate about what's going on in Ukraine that, you know, you just, when you see these pictures, um, pictures of Ben, you can't, you can't stay indifferent to, to what's going on in Ukraine because you can see it from the point of view of a European person, but from very, very patriotic in Ukrainian way. So I can't, I can't choose one of them because I would say that almost everyone is genius. Tatiana, could you tell us please, how did it come along with this exhibition and what is your aim? Uh, the idea was very spontaneous. 
Um, I saw the Facebook uh, post of one of uh, Ukrainian-born artists, Diana Mess. That she has visited Ukrainian military hospital and that was a very emotional experience for her to be there and make photographs of our wounded and injured soldiers. And I just wrote to her that, Diana, would you actually consider to make an exhibition? And we started uh, to communicate and that how this exhibition happened. And also at another event in Ukrainian Institute, we saw works of a British photographer from Oxford, Ben Robinson. And we approached to him asking if he would like to participate and he was very happy to take part as well. And so we combined both artists in one exhibition. That's how it had happened. So you've got the Western eye here and the Eastern eye, the native speakers and the British yes. um, artists. Is it easy for you to compare the two, to combine the two? Uh, in this, on this occasion, particularly at this exhibition, it was very, very easy because uh, both photographers, they are supporters of Ukraine and they have a very basic understanding that Ukraine at the moment, it's a front line of Europe and they want to help Ukraine and they understand that. So that was very easy to bring them together at one place and at one time. So what is your targeted audience? Because of course some of the images are very distressing and is it easy for everyone to just come across to see it? Do you think it's going to be quite good? Uh, I would say that would be difficult because uh, people they want to live ordinary quiet life, family life if we would say. They want to get their salary, come back at home, watch TV and enjoy their life. And particularly here in the peaceful country for a century, nobody is prepared to come and see wounded people without their limbs. And that requires some, uh, to have some internal strength to look in the eyes of people who is, who is suffering. Uh, with this exhibition, it's particularly very difficult to get audience into the hall. So what kind of people do you actually expect to see? Uh, we are looking for people who actually has this kind of strength to stand up for Ukraine and say that we need external support from Europe. I noticed you mentioned today during the presentation that you've managed to gather quite a lot of money last time. Do you expect to hit the same sort of target and help as many people as you did last time, this time? Uh, it's very difficult to compare absolutely different projects because uh, it's very as your previous question, it was quite right. It's not very easy to get people in and look at the faces people just returning from the war or suffering from the war. With the previous exhibition, that was more images about nice, beautiful, peaceful Ukraine, striking images of Ukrainian ladies, uh, children's uh, landscapes, and that would be people that actually want to see it. Uh, with this project, we target very narrow audience. We want to uh, raise awareness what is going on in Ukraine. So we do not expect, and on this occasion, on this with this particular exhibition, to get the same amount of donations. The most important for us to tell people: look, we have wounded and injured every single day. We express our condolences to France because today was killed more than 100 people and we understand what tragedy it is. But in Ukraine we have lost more, much more people. And we are actually, our voice is not, has been heard. That's the problem. So we've, we've noticed that Ukraine Aid has quite a few projects laid out. Um, should we expect more projects in the future? Well, <laughs> because we are a very open organization and we always tell, we create a platform for initiatives. I can't tell what next idea will be, because we are welcoming people uh, coming with their own ideas. But uh, at the moment, we'd like to be concentrated on psychological rehabilitation of uh, war casualties, and that will be the main uh, aim we want to achieve, to help them. So provided um, lots of people will come and this exhibition will be received the way you want it to be received, um, if somebody wanted to join your organization and help in some way, how do they approach you? Very simple. Just uh, 
projects our way Facebook tweet to us go to our website fill the form send us email and we respond honestly we respond at every single inquiry email and call Caroline Hames and I'm a professional classical actress. I've been an actress since I was 15 years old and uh, I've always had a great love for poetry and passion for reciting it. Uh, my reasons are, are various. First of all, I'm of East European origin in that my mother was from Poland originally. They lost everything in um, 1940. That she came from a landowning family. Uh, her father was a Polish admiral. They were very wealthy. They lost everything. They came out with absolutely nothing um, but their lives, at least. And so I was born after that war generation and was always made aware of what had happened. Um, my father's mother was from St. Petersburg, also lost absolutely everything and died a tragic death in the end, uh, because of, of, of losing everything. Um, the reason why I'm here today mainly is because I met the most wonderful Ukrainian doctor, <laughs> Dr. Roman Kreg, who is your president of the Ukrainian Medical Association. He very, very kindly offered, wrote me a letter and invited me to take part artistically in this event. So it is my great pleasure to be here and I hope I can continue to support the Ukrainian cause uh, both proactively, if I can, artistically and obviously by trying to raise funds, which I've done in the past for Poland when Poland went through a crisis in the 80s. Do you think it's important to uh, organize events like this and spread the word to the public because the media has gone awfully quiet? I know uh, and it is hugely important and I'm utterly frustrated and angry and furious. I wish I had some influence over the media, over the BBC, over Sky News, Channel 4 that I, I'm an avid uh, news follower. Uh, it totally breaks my heart that there is no focus whatsoever, no reference even to Ukraine. Uh, it just leaves me quite speechless. I, I've been trying to fundraise by drawing English people's attention to the fact that this event is taking place today. Uh, I have distributed at least 50 uh, leaflets to friends, not to strangers, but to strangers as well. And I am totally amazed by the lack of support I've had. Uh, it's extraordinary. Uh, is it, some of them have actually said to me, these are educated people, oh, where is Ukraine? Is it near Lithuania? Uh, I'm aghast. So the more events we have, the better. It's urgently necessary to raise money and to raise the profile. Do you have any favourites amongst the photographs displayed here today? many it would be very hard to say. I, I love the one of the old Babushka um, who said this is worse than the world war, this is worse than World War II and I recollect uh, um, a Channel 4 item where I believe that same Babushka in her headscarf was actually speaking on Channel 4 news. Um, that struck me. Uh, there are many photographs, the children, the man with amputated legs with the bandages, They're very powerful we just need to continue, we need to persist, we need to be proactive and even if people think we're being aggressive about it, we need to get more British people involved and perhaps other members of the Eastern community, East European previous satellite countries who are now in the EU, such as Poland, such as Lithuania, to help us. 
Thank you very much, Caroline, for your performance today and for your support. You've been great. Help. Absolutely privilege and a great pleasure and you're all wonderful people, wonderful to work with. Thank you.